Hey, AJ here. How you guys doing? Uh, first of all, I just want to say Happy New Year's to all my subscribers and uh, viewers. Uh, today, we have another one of those how-to videos. This time, we're going to change this uh, rear sprocket of uh, this cart. Uh, this motor is the Briggs & Stratton LO206. Most motors are the same as far as changing the rear sprocket. You can have a shifter cart or a, uh, a Rotax tag motor, should I say. They're pretty much the same on how to change it. It's basically taking these bolts off or screws. Um, down below, you'll, there's a screw there. You, you'll uh, loosen up, push it back, and there's another screw there. I'll show you guys, but pretty much they're similar concept as far as changing it. So don't be afraid on doing this by yourself. All right, so these are the tools you need to change your rear sprocket of your go-kart. So from right to left, we have WD-40 to clean up all this excess mess on the sprocket, like grease buildup. Then your alignment tool. This is what I uh, showed you guys on the previous videos I had. Basically, it aligns the front and the uh, rear sprocket. So very important tool. Then you got your wrenches. 10, 15, and 17 millimeter wrenches. Your ratchet, small one. Then you got your 10 mil socket, one and a half socket. Your Allen wrench key, whatever, 10 mil. And then lastly, your this rear sprocket they're gonna be changing it with. And that's pretty much it to uh, do the job. So first step you want to do is loosen this portion of uh, the go-kart. I forgot the name of this thing. I just say the screw right here. So you need your 15 and 17 uh, wrenches. And you're just going to loosen it up. All right. So I think this is what's hold the motor mount on this side. Actually, it's not holding it, but it's, uh, it's one part of what holds it. All right, let's... So most carts have this piece, so uh, I've seen one, I had, a, I had a Zodi cart and it's on the other side, but it's still the same sort of, sort of way to, uh, to loosen it up. So let's just, let's see. So what you're doing is basically uh, pushing this back so that you can push this back, this motor mat, this whole motor mat, so you can loosen the chain back there. All right, so once, once that's done, uh, you'll wanna loosen the bolts here, or the screws that holds the motor mat. So we'll, we'll need the one and a half socket to loosen it. As a matter of fact, I don't know if you guys can see that. Yeah, so those, those four screws, that's the, those are the screws that will unscrew so we can loosen up the, the motor mat and push it back. So as you can see, if you wiggle this piece right here, it's loose. So you can, you don't have to completely remove the screws, but loose enough so that you can push this back like this, see? 
So I can actually push this back. And by doing that, let's look over here. See how we can, so this part is loose now. We can literally take it off. Boom, look at that, it just came off. Haha. -ha. Yes, uh, so when that's completely off, all we have to do is remove this by removing the screws right here. And we'll put the new one in. It's really simple. So let's get to that. So once you remove the rear sprockets, it's pretty much straightforward from there. You put the new one in, screw it in on that mounting, put the change back, and just go in reverse order. But f before we do that, I just want to mention, so this one is on this side because the drive is on this side. So road tax motors and any other ta tag motors, the drive is on this side. So, so you'll have the mounting here, and you actually have to just like kind of how you did there, unmount it, and then you actually have to push the the sprocket, the rear sprocket from uh, the axle. And just a little, it, it, you know, just a, a mention there. If you have a road tax motor, that's what you need to do. But for us, it's much easier, especially with this uh, mounting and the split, the split rear sprocket. It's pretty much you just put the screws there and you're good to go so before we mount it I also want to mention if you look over here you see how it's kind of dirty so it's a good habit to to clean it once you remove the rear sprocket so is the screws and the bolts so you want to make sure you clean that before you put it back in all right so we'll do that and let's put it back together after that. Once you have that in place, make sure you tighten it. Now once you tighten it up, it's time to slide this back in. Shit. Yeah, normally you would clean this. Uh, once you have it on there, basically, like I said, put it, uh, go in reverse order. So as you can see, it's all in place now. But before we tighten everything up, we need to ensure that this sprocket is aligned with the front one. So we're gonna use this tool to, to ensure that is the case.
All right. It looks good. So all we have to do is tighten it back, and we are done. So if you're not, if you're having problems of uh, aligning it, you need to make sure the mount, the rear mount, loosen it up by uh, loosening up the screw back here. See this too? You loosen it up and then you can move it back here to the right or left depending on how much um, you need to adjust. Same with if you have a Rotax, it'll be on this side. So I just want to make sure you, you guys are, are, are aware of that if you're having problems aligning your front to the rear uh, sprocket. Alright, so the last step is basically just fine tuning everything else. Uh, so one thing before you tighten everything up is you can slide the motor front to the front so you can you know straighten up this uh, chain but what you want don't want to do is slide it all the way forward and then you'll have this really tight so chain you don't want that because you'll burn out the clutch so you want to have just a little bit of slack so you can, uh, it's not gonna burn your your clutch. So, so make sure you don't push it all the way forward and then have a tight chain. So you just wanna have to have that little slack there. So once you have that little slack, just a little bit, not too much, then you're ready to tighten it up. So basically go back here, just like earlier, tighten all this stuff up. tight and then with this piece you just pretty much what we did earlier well we didn't do it earlier but we're just gonna go in reverse order so we're gonna move it all the way and then just tighten this part all right well, that's not all the way so that's that's, there you have it. So just, yeah. So move it forward and tighten it up, and you're done, really. And that's pretty much it for changing the sprocket, the rear sprocket of your go kart. So let's recap. So basically, you want to do this because if you're in a, a track that is has a lot has a long straight, you would want a smaller. A sprocket like I have here now and or if you have a shorter track with shorter straights or hardly any straights then you'll want a pure acceleration machine you you would want a bigger sprocket there so it, it takes a lot of fa fine tuning to get a right setup for a go-kart uh, this is just one piece of the puzzle so sometimes you'll gain almost a half a second just changing the sprocket so definitely look into that if you're topping out at the end of the straight that means your you have a your sprocket is too big although your acceleration would be nice but you want to make sure you have a good balanced go-kart and fast just about everywhere so it takes a lot of fine tuning and this like i said this is just one uh, piece of the puzzle so uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys soon.